and I trust that you're ready for a wonderful evening. And so I'm going to get right into it and we're going to start um, answering some of the questions straight away. All right, so the first question that I was asked is, I mention and I speak about the dunamis power of God and nobody seems to be able to find it in the Bible. All right, let me just explain. The word dunamis is actually the Greek word for power. But it's not just the normal power. You get different types of words that are translated power. But dunamis is a specific word that means the power of God to create. Or the power of God to change something. Okay? So, in other words, the dunamis power of God raised Jesus from the dead. Okay? So, that means that the power was strong enough to change the circumstance and raise him from the dead. And so if you're going to look for the word dunamis, you're not going to find it in the Bible. You actually have to go through a Greek um, a Greek and, and uh, a lexicon, okay, so that you'll be able to find it. So I just wanted just to answer that. All right, I want to know how to break fornication spirits because I think a curse came over me through the act of sin. All right, I'm not sleeping around anymore. Um, but has committed my life to the Lord Jesus Christ recently, I can definitely see a barrenness in my life. No husband, no kids, no job, no blessing. All right, then let me tell you how to deal with this. It's like any other sin. It's not one's bigger than the other. What you need to do is you need to repent. You need to go before God and say, God, I am sorry for the actions that I did, for the deeds that I did outside of the covenant. And therefore, I ask you please to forgive me, number one. Number two is then you bind the devil that is trying to steal from you. You say, in the name of Jesus, I'm now free. Satan, you take your hands off me. I release the blessing and the power of God on my life. You see, no matter how bad your sin is, God can turn it around. Look at Paul. Paul was first Saul who persecuted the Christians. Then he became Paul and became one of the most, um, one of the greatest uh, apostles ever. <clears throat> so I want you just to understand that and to know that, um, that that is how it works. Okay. I know a person whose husband has left her, divorced her for another woman. Now the husband has, um, has also a child with a new wife. Okay, so in other words, they've remarried. All right. He married her. Okay. Her first wife now says that God, in God's eyes, he's still married and he's, she, he is her husband. And so you're praying him back. Is this correct? All right. You must remember that when somebody is divorced, if they're not married, you can still pray them back in that. But the minute they get married, there is a new covenant in play. So you can't just do that. Remember, also, even if it was done in sin, there is still the issue that you need to deal with of um, a free will. That person has a free will. So you can't force somebody to serve the Lord. You can't force them to stay married to you. Now, you can break the demonic thing around it, but not if they've already remarried. So if they've remarried already, then you need to sit down and say, God, I release this into your hands. You deal with it, but I'm going to move on. So my suggestion in that case is you need to move on um, because that there's already now another marriage and another child involved. Okay. What about when you have an operation and you're not in control? Okay, can demons enter your mind and body then? All right, I want to just, that's a very, very interesting question. What we do is this is, if I know somebody who's going into theater and going under anesthetic, we pray over them and we pray God's protection over them immediately. Okay, I'm not very keen of people going and um, in under anesthetic okay now i know that we have to i know that you know if you're going to go for a major op you're going to have to do that all right as far as possible i would always sit down and say to the doctor is it possible do they have to or don't they if they don't have to we always choose the other option but if it really is a case of that you don't have a choice let's say like a, a heart bypass or something all right so what we do then is we pray over the person when they go in and we also pray with them when they come out now, I just want to make a statement here that might sound a bit strange. But remember that hospitals, a lot of people die in hospitals. So what's going to happen? There's a lot of demonic activity. People that come into some hospitals, um, they bring demonic uh, things with them. And when they die, those demons are around. Okay, so there's always a demonic thing around. And sometimes um, people have picked up uh, a spirit of death even walking past the door or whatever. So you need to understand that you need to pray. 
You need to pray and put a protection around yourself, just like you would in a hotel room. Okay? Wherever you're going to a public place where stuff could happen and things could, um, could take place, I want you to know that you need to pray and pray God's protection and pray God that God is going to help you through that. So every time that we walk into a hospital, we start restricting any demonic thing that we pick up. Okay? And it's not the people's fault. It's not medicine's fault. It's just the mere fact that often people die in hospitals and those demons, if they had any demons attached to them, they are now loosed. Okay, so now they're starting to move around. Okay, so it's nothing to be scared of, nothing to be afraid of. It's the same as if you go to a, a, um, a um, um, hotel. All right, there's many times when people come and they say, listen, um, I can't sleep in a hotel because it's just too much stuff in the spirit going on. Well, you just bind what's going on in that room, command those demons to leave, and it will calm down and it will be peaceful. Okay, and so if you're the person that's really sensitive to the spirit world, then you will pick up these things. Okay, so just remember that when you, when you go into hospitals and deal with hospitals. Okay, Proverbs chapter 26 verse 2 says, Like a fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse will not land on its intended victim. So will curses then not affect us if it's undeserved? All right. What if we don't know that there's a curse placed on our life or business, etc.? All right. Now, let me tell you something. You don't know if a curse has been placed and the curse is not going to be able to grip you unless you end up with something in your life. Now, let me tell you something. Every one of us have got something. So we don't think that you don't have anything. Every single one of us either lie or not 100% honest. We, we do things that we shouldn't be doing. Come on, I don't think that I've met somebody who's actually perfect. And so the devil will find some hook or cranny or something that you've done, okay, that you're still practicing as a Christian, as a spiritual Christian. And so what's going to happen is there's going to be something that's going to draw this thing, but you can cut it off. You have the power to cut it off when you pick it up. Okay, so it's not that it has to stay with you. I'm just saying it's going to come. Stuff is going to come. But you're going to be able to break it off and cut it off in Jesus' name. All right? So, sure, if you have nothing and there's no reason for it, even if they put a curse on you, it's not going to take hold. Let me give you an example. It's like when the Satanists were putting curses on us daily, all the time. Okay? And they were putting on stuff and it wasn't gripping us. Because what we are doing is every day we'll be repenting, cleaning our hearts, putting the blood of Jesus around us. Okay? Protecting the environment. Because it's very, very important. That we, we see the power of God in action. Alright, why could a pastor not deliver a person from a demon? Alright, it actually strangled him and didn't want to leave. Surely the pastor had the authority to do the deliverance. Well, you see, the pastor has the authority, he just didn't know how to apply it. Every Christian has the authority, they just don't know how to apply it. And often what happens is with, the, with this type of situation is, is that maybe the pastor has got fear in his heart or something you might come across very bold and solid and, know what he's, and say that he knows what he's doing. But really, a demon will pick up on that very quickly. And so it's not that he doesn't have the authority, he just doesn't know how to use it. And one of the other things that you must also take note is, is that the person who's trying to deliver, maybe they didn't want to be delivered. They go, well, who, didn't want to, who doesn't want to be delivered? I've got lots of people who don't want to be delivered. One of the reasons they don't want to be delivered is because of fear. They get scared what's going to happen from the occult side if they do get set free. The other crowd, they want to get delivered of certain demons. They say, look, these ones are bugging me and harassing me. Get rid of those. They're controlling me. But I want to keep the others. I want to keep the sexual demons. And I want to keep the ones where I can manipulate and, and, and. And so you've got to realize that, that you've got to get to the place where you know how to deal with this thing correctly. And I have thought on that. I have thought on the deliverance workshop. So I want you please to go back to that and go and study that thing properly. It will give you a lot of answers. Once saved, always saved. What about God who says that he's married to the unbeliever? It does not say that he's married to the unbeliever. It says that he's married to the backslider. In other words, somebody who has had a relationship and fallen back and God is going to call him back in. Okay, so I want you to know that this is important. 
God is married to everybody and he's going to try his best to get you into heaven. But you still have a choice. You still have the choice. God never overrides somebody's um, uh, will. Okay, your will is still your will and you are going to be able to do what you choose to do in Jesus' name. When our children get divorced and we as parents still pray for them, do we have a spiritual authority over them like when they were unmarried? Yes. And all that needs to happen is the parents just need to call in that child that's divorced and say, in the name of Jesus, we break the soul ties and the connection with the ex. And Lord, right now, we bring them back under our covering and we pray over them and we just bring them back. Okay, so just bring them back under your covering and then you will have them in the full authority that you, you had before. All right, if you read the Bible out loud, is it also part of building altars? Yes, because it's word. Anything where you pray or you read the word or you speak the word, you are building altars. Okay, so it's really important that you understand that. All right. This lady is seeing a lot of visions. I love these visions, but I don't know what it means. How can I find out about it? All right, what I would suggest you do is, is that you go and get hold of... Um, uh, Evelyn's book on dreams, all right, you can say that you're busy with a vision, but the interpretation works on a similar basis, okay, so go get that book and check the, the interpretation, whether I saw a vision when I was awake and I get this vision, or if I had it as a, as a dream, okay, because I was, I was dreaming something, the system still works the same, it's the same spiritual uh, gifting that's in operation, so I want, I would suggest that you go and get um, Evelyn's book, and then you can go and deal with it there and see what she has to say about it and how to deal with it. All right. I paid my tithe. But, okay, this lady pays her tithe this month. But what she used to do was take her tithe and split it up into five or seven different places. Okay. Now she says that she's paid her tithe, the proper amount, to the church like she's meant to. But now she doesn't want to stop the debit orders for the others, okay, the other places that you're supporting. And so now it's ended up like 20% of her income. So now she's running short. Now what? Because now she can't make her budget. All right, let me explain what needs to happen here. You need to start getting to a place of faith. Tithing is not a debate. It's not an option. Okay, if you want to see the blessing of the Lord in your life, you have to tithe. If you are not tithing, things are going to go horribly wrong in your finance. So I want to tell you right now that it is a biblical principle and I've thought on it and I trust that you understand it. Okay, it is not giving something to God. It's giving back to God what was his. I'm returning the tithe to, to Jesus Christ. I'm giving it back. It's his ownership. Okay, and the reason for that is because I'm making him my source. So, I need to tithe first. Then I need to believe God for a supernatural um, abundance of finance coming into my house. So that we can help the others. So that we can help the other ministry. So we can help the other guys who are in struggling. And, and, and. <coughs> Sorry, but you don't compromise on your tithe. Alright, if you really want... To start having spiritual battles in your life, compromise in that area. God is calling us to be faithful stewards in our tithing. All right. And he said, test me in this. See that I will not protect you. I will not protect your finance. Okay. So I want you please to understand that. All right. My bird has gradually gone blind in the last six weeks. I've been praying and commanding his eyesight. Okay, can we believe God for healing on animals? Yes, we can. Okay, so we can. The Bible is very clear we can. All right, my husband and I served in the ministry for eight years. The pastor approached my husband to be a spiritual father to him. We were not married at the time. About five years ago, we felt that we should leave the ministry since we are not sure what needs to happen in terms of relationship with our spiritual father. There are no hard feelings between us, 
but just don't necessarily agree with the way uh, the way of things of doing things. All right, so let's have a look. All right, now you, you're sitting in a situation now, you've got a spiritual father, somebody who's speaking into your life. He has been your spiritual father, and now you want to leave the church. Now you sit down and go, okay, if I leave the church and I join another church, am I going to have another spiritual father? All right, now this is something that is really tricky. Now, what happened in my case is when I left uh, the church that I was with, with Pastor Jimmy Crompton, who is my spiritual father, when I left, he actually released me. He said, listen, I'm now releasing you as being your spiritual father because I went to another ministry. But I did not pick up that relationship like I had with Pastor Jimmy. Remember when I left Pastor Jimmy, it wasn't Pastor Jimmy's issue. I didn't have an issue with him. There was other things going on. And so what happened was when I left, um, the relationship was he released me. Okay, and he cut, he cut that fathering expectation off me but the point is you don't just run around and collect spiritual fathers okay so even though I was in another ministry serving another house doing whatever they asked me to do I never ever picked up that fathering element with them okay because we just never connected you will always stick to who your real spiritual father is and so years later I went back to Pastor Jimmy and we sorted things out long ago and we built that relationship and we went back. Now, we, he's still my spiritual father. He always was. He, he, you know, 16 odd years, 20 years, I was under his ministry directly. He inputted and laid my foundation. So what am I saying? I'm saying you need to go. If you're going to leave the church, you need to sit down and be released from the spiritual fathering concept. All right? Because what happens is that sometimes you get, you outgrow. You know, sometimes it's like it's like in your own house. Um, sometimes your children outgrow you. The relationship changes. You know, even now, um, my children haven't left the house. But our discussions are not like, you will do what I tell you to do. Our discussions are now, what do you think God's saying? What's God saying to you? And we discuss it on a different level. You know, even in, in my relationship with my natural dad. We will sit down and discuss things out. It's not he says and I have to do. As you grow up, you, the relationship changes. And so Pastor Jimmy will always be my spiritual father and I'll always give him credit for it. Okay? And But I'm not under his house right now. I have my own ministry. All right? I, I do what God's calling me to do. So you must understand that there is a time sometimes when you need to leave the house. Just whatever you do, do not leave with an offense in your heart. The minute you have an offense in your heart, the devil is going to climb in and destroy relationships and destroy ministries. So please, I'm asking you nicely, just do it the right way. Okay? And then make sure that you get under a ministry that is going to feed you, protect you, grow you up, and make sure that you can be strong and solid. Do not get to the place we are going to just be floating. All right. My son used to cut himself. Is that a blood sacrifice like the abortions? Yes, it has the potential of opening it up to that level. It all depends on where the person's uh, at when they are doing it. Okay. Some people are actually doing it as part of the occultic uh, ritual. Others are doing it because they, they're just struggling. They are hurting. Okay, but the point is it opens up for a demonic influence in your life. It is a real serious issue. Okay, I had a young lady who did not cut herself because she didn't want people to see that she was cutting herself. And so what she would do is she would physically bite her cheek. I mean, there are many times that I'll catch her and I want to talk to her and her mouth is just covered in blood. All right, and it's just because she was hurting. There's a hurt, but it opens up for demonic influence and it just causes problems in your life. So really get that thing con uh, under control. And uh, how do you do that? You go for counseling in your soul. It is a soul issue. That's what's causing it. But the demonic climbs in and then it becomes a real problem. Then you've got a battle on your hand. When it's a soul issue, it's a hurt issue. I'm struggling with this. The minute the demonic is involved, it becomes a battle. 
okay then it's almost like an addiction because the demonic is now influencing us and it makes it very difficult okay <clears throat> All right, I cannot call my pastor daddy like everybody else does. I feel that it's wrong. All right, I agree with that. Guys, listen, I'm sorry I took a while. I was just reading that comment quickly. All right, I want to just tell you that you don't call somebody daddy. All right, there's not like a thing of a daddy and a mommy. I have a natural dad. I have a natural mom. Even my spiritual father, I don't go, hey, spiritual papa or something. All right, I call him Pastor Jimmy. Okay, so please don't get into that thing. That thing is just getting super spooky. All right, so so I'm, I'm not into that idea where you're going to call the leadership daddy and mommy and stuff like that. And I don't expect anybody to do that. All right. I bought the foundational topics book online um, last week for 100 Rand. How do I receive the book? All right, there's a few people who have had issues with this. Let me tell you how it works. When you buy the book, you get sent an email on the email now look in the in your um spam folder too sometimes it ends up there but in the email you will find <coughs> sorry it will give you the name of what you bought you click on that name and you can download that book onto your computer then you've got it if you don't come right just send a um uh, an email to students at gibiblecollege.com and we just say that you purchased it, uh, English or Afrikaans, and we will email it to you. Okay? See so if you're not coming right. When we're praying to change an atmosphere, must the spirit be around? I'll explain my question. I have someone staying in my home. She goes out to work during the day. When she comes home, the whole atmosphere changes. Can I do the prayers while she's at work, or do I need to wait until they, ma uh, till they manifest in the home? At the time she comes in. Well, let me tell you something what's going on. What's happening is a very simple thing. You are busy praying when she's not there. She's coming into an atmosphere. There's a clash. All right. So there's a clash in spirits. So the more you build the atmosphere and build the anointing in your house, the stronger the demonic clash is going to be. I mean, we have it all the time in our house. All the time. All right. Somebody walks in with a demonic issue. They are so uncomfortable. It's just not funny. But then the other side is also a problem now because now everybody comes to our house and says, there's so much peace here. Everybody wants to hang out here. All right. And so, and I'm talking about, it's been like that for years. Because that is how we've created an atmosphere in our house. Because we play praise and worship. We play the word. We create this atmosphere where there is an anointing in the house. Okay. But what happens is when the demonic comes to that, they find a clash. So, you need to get to the place where you know that this person comes in, you need to build it so strong that that thing is either going to change or they're going to leave. You do not have to go and pray over that atmosphere when the person is actually sitting there. You don't need to worry about it. You can pray when they are not there. Okay, it doesn't uh, have any issue whatsoever. All right. Uh, where do I find the link to Zoom? All right, there are two two links that you need for Zoom uh, that we are busy with. Wednesday evening, where the body of Christ come together, we pray for each other. It is probably the most important meeting in the week for me, and I want to encourage every single believer to be part of that, where we actually pray for each other. All right, and then the other link is Monday evenings at seven thirty, where I pray for business people. All right, if you own a business and you want to be part of that, um, those are the two links that you need. Now, let me tell you what we've done. What we've done is because of the big um, events that we've had, uh, we had a tremendous amount of Satanists come and just uh, dive onto our feed. And so what I really appreciate was Pastor Donnie did this, and I really thought it was quite uh, fun. If you want to get onto the link, the password is I love Jesus. So every Satanist has to type in I love Jesus just to be able to get in, okay? But what we've done for security reasons, we do not release the Zoom links until the day of the event. So Mondays, we will release the, um, the business link, the Kings and Priests link for Monday nights. And then Wednesdays, 
we will release the other link for the small groups okay so you can find it on dr arthur frost facebook page at any time and you can go get the links there um, on the day that that you need them and uh, just know that that's why we're doing it we don't have a standard link that we just keep going with because we don't want trouble on our feeds okay and uh, we will take care of it the other thing that i would like to please request every single person if you come onto a zoom link anything that has to do with us please put your name on there let me explain to you where the problem is because the people come on and it, and it says to us um an iphone or a galaxy 10 whatever your phone is if you don't um if you don't uh, put your name in there it tells us the device's name whatever your phone is that you're using now the problem is this is these guys who come to hack your feed they all use those devices now we don't know which device it is and so what we do is we go and we just cut out and we throw everybody off who is a galaxy 10 and then a lot of folk get mad with us and say listen we were on the feed and you threw us off yeah we threw you off deliberately because you did not name your device so I'm really asking you, please name your Zoom device. All right, go into your Zoom settings and put your name in there. It's very easy to do. And so that every time you come onto our feed, it's got your name so that you can be safe and secure. Okay, so that we will not keep throwing you out. All right. I lost my business and income during lockdown. Should I draw money from my bond to tithe? All right, I'm very loath to do that. I'm very loath to sit down and say to you, go and do debt. All right, I'm not into that at all. What I rather sit down and say, listen, let's trust God for seed. And you sow the seed and you start building this thing up and saying, God, I'm going to get income, not on the debt. I understand that you might need to draw on your overdraft or your bond to live. But I'm not keen on people tithing on their bonds. Okay, I'm not saying that you don't have a bond. I'm talking, see, I'm talking about if your if your income is from your bond just to make it through this month or next month. Please don't do that. It's not wise to do that. It's not you're not going to have faith. You need to have faith, and you need to trust God. So let's start off fresh and say, God, I'm going to even if it's fifty rand. I'm going to take fifty rand. I'm going to sow this as seed. You know. Um, we do not keep tabs on the bank accounts, okay? Anybody who gives to us and stuff, we, we have no idea who gives, all right? I definitely do not, and I'm asking people, do not put names on there. I don't want to know about it. Why? Because I've got to treat everybody equally. But every now and then, somebody will come and say, listen, somebody has given five rand. Somebody's given 10 rand. You know, the small amounts. And so I sit down and I go, God, I pray for that because that has to be seed. That has to be seed. Nobody's just going to go and the expenses of paying. Okay. So when it comes to paying it in, you need to sit down and then you need to say, God, I'm trusting you. And when people tell me that, and when, you know, they let me know, listen, that somebody's given a small amount. I get excited because I believe that we need to stand with that and trust them and trust God for them in Jesus name. All right. Somebody said that they've sold their house. How do they work out their first fruits? That is an amount that you can do what, with whatever you choose. There's not a fixed amount on that. Okay. So now what happens to first fruits? The first fruits very clearly says in the word, it can go to two places. It can go to the spiritual person who is feeding you. Okay, and it all could go to the local church that's feeding you. Okay, there's not a clear cut on this thing. All right, so there, there are very times, there are times in the word where people would give to a specific person in ministry and say, I want to help you, but it's coming out of my first fruits. But it goes to a spiritual investment. Make sure that your first fruits always goes to your spiritual investment. Okay, and make sure that you get it sorted out. But there's not a figure on that. All right, a first fruit is where you get something that's supernatural and you want to give a blessing. It's not something that comes. The tithe is your, your monthly income, the money that you're getting every month. That's your tithe. You tithe on that. Your first fruit is when something supernatural happens and you give it. And especially when something um, uh, abnormal happens in your business. 
Okay, where you get a big contract, then you give something off that. All right. What about a priestly gift? All right, I don't believe in a priestly gift. Okay, I believe in investing. In the New Testament, we don't read about priestly gifts. All right, but what you read about is people investing in their spiritual lives. That's why you'll see Paul, the guys that gave him financially to support him and to carry him personally. Okay, and then also there is the thing where there's the ministry, the group. Okay, where they gave into Jerusalem, that was to the church. There was the church of Jerusalem and they were giving to the church. So you give to your local church, your tithe goes to the local church. Okay, goes to where you are spiritually being fed. The first fruit you can choose. You can either take it to the person who's giving you your spiritual food or you could give it to the church. Okay, but I'm not keen on this priestly gift idea and that. And if you want to bless the person who's, who's helping you and assist you, that I have no problem with too. You know, you want to sit down and say, listen, thank you for the, the input that you gave in my life. I've done that many times. You know, somebody's come with a spiritual thing that has really helped me, turn me around. I've gone to them and I said, listen, I want to know where your personal thing is. I just want to bless you as a family or bless you as an individual. I've done that many times. That's not, that's got nothing to do with the principle. Okay. The principle is tithing and first fruits. Very important. And invest in your spiritual walk. Always invest in your spiritual walk. All right. Because the more you invest in it, the more you're going to get from it. You know, I've always said to you, I invest in where I'm getting food. The people that have helped me, I will always give financially. Not to bribe them, not to do anything other than to say, please keep going. If you can help me, and I'm telling you, some people have helped us out of the worst commorses. And I'm telling you, if they can help me and get me out of there, they can help others as well. And so I do that to help keep them going and keep the caliber of ministry going. Because I believe that God is raising up men and women to set people free. Okay. Secondly, please explain Matthew chapter 8 verse 12 as I believe it refers to purgatory. You see me in this? 8 verse 12. Uh, Matthew 8 verse 12 um, speaks about uh, that they'll be cast into the darkness and there'll be gnashing and wailing of teeth. But I want to tell you that um, we do not believe in purgatory at all. There is nothing in scripture that, that says that. This scripture does not back the fact that you can sit down and change somebody's idea from where they are. Okay? So I need you to understand that. So I need you to know that you need to uh, know that the gospel of Jesus Christ is simple. If you die, you go to heaven or you go to hell. Waiting for judgment or waiting to come back and get your body. That's it. There's no in between. There is no purgatory. There's nothing of praying people out of a, a, a waiting state. There's nothing like that. Even when there was a place in, in hell, remember the story of Lazarus? And the guy was busy suffering and he said, please go and warn them. The answer was, no, you are here. It's the end of it. Okay, so it's done. All right, people are trying to um, ask about banking stuff from outside of South Africa. Please just contact me on my WhatsApp, 0826592224. Okay. If you are trying to get all of banking details from outside of the country, we have to help you. There's some things that are slightly different there. All right. We need to look at doing a declaration on soul ties related to marriage, business, sex, friendship in order to break the bond. All right. Help to pray for the above prayer declaration. All right. I want to just tell you that soul ties is a soul tie between two people. Okay, and that's it. There's not this, this other lot of soul ties and everything else. Okay, so, so the, you don't have a soul tie with your business. You don't have a soul tie with friends and stuff. You have a soul tie with your spouse or somebody else, which is an illicit affair. It's like an emotional attachment. That's it. There's no other thing. So you must just understand when we speak about soul ties, it's two levels. One, marriage. Two, outside of marriage. 
of with another person. Okay, and that's where the problem lies. All right, and we can deal with that. All right, we need to learn on the topic of spiritual warfare. We need to we need prayer warriors over our group uh, where we partake in the teachings. Uh, we partake in your teaching to go out on all your transmissions. All right, I will teach on spiritual warfare. I won't get to that. I will teach you how to fight in the spirit and what to do. Okay, we will help you with all of that. I'm 43 and I've been drinking cholesterol meds since I was 21. All right, I inherited it from my mom. 10th of April this year, we, I decided to put my faith in God to heal me. I cut off all things, including the cholesterol and came through the, they came through the bloodline. Now, three months later, I've tested and the cholesterol sky high. Okay, I've taught on this before. People, if you are connected to any medication, you cannot just stop it. You have to wean it off. You have to take it off slowly. You have to work with your doctor. All right, there are side effects to this thing. So please do not be unwise. You can believe God, but take it step by step and say, listen, I need to know what to do now. I want to cut this medication down to a quarter. A uh, quarter less and say can we try this and work with your doctor because now you are in a place where your body is dependent on that if you cut that thing you are going to cause a real problem okay I have a friend who had a leg, leg amputated about eight years ago he's, he's currently busy with a court case and hopes to get paid out due to hospital negligence if he gets paid out how must he tithe on this money, on the lump sum? Well, it's like an income. You tithe on it, 10%. Okay, it's, it's an income to you. Okay, it's a straight income. I'm retired and I get a SASA pension on which I pay my tithe each month. I also receive a pension paid out every month on my Provident Fund. Do I tithe on the amount that I get from the Provident Fund as well? Well, let me tell you this. The Bible says it's your income. So any form of income you need to tithe on. So in our house, any form of income, no matter where the money comes, no matter how it comes, okay, we will check that the tithe goes out. Why? Because it is God's money. We don't want to play with that. Okay, so I want to encourage you. You need to deal with this thing issue in your own life. Okay. All right, a lot of businessmen tithe. It's part of the economy that Dr. Foss prays for every day. All right, you need, to, you need to tithe out of your personal income. And you need to decide where your faith level is. If you're not on the faith level where you can believe God for that 10%, then start a little bit less, but at least start somewhere and get to that place. All right. Uh, this is the story of speaking in tongues. The argument in our house now is, is that somebody speaks in tongues, there must be somebody that lays it out. Otherwise, it creates confusion. Okay, which I think is exactly the case with us. Can one teach and also pray in tongues without anybody saying what it means? Okay, please clarify this for us. Yes, you can. Praying in tongues builds yourself up, builds your, edifies yourself. Go read it in Jude. But I have a teaching. Please go look in the Bible College lectures on the gifts of the Spirit. And we deal with the different, the diverse tongues. And there's a whole teaching just on that. So go and have a look for that. And you will see that it will really assist you. All right. So that you understand the different things on the tongues and how it works. All right. I think that we've come to the end tonight and we are going to just pray together. And I believe that these questions and answers are helping you. I want to just ask you, please, just to stand with us and believe that God is going to do a supernatural thing across our nation. So let's pray together. Lord, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you are moving by your spirit. Lord, I pray right now that as we go our way, Lord, I thank you that you are dealing with us, that you are teaching us, you are growing us up. And Lord, I pray your blessing on each and every person tonight in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen.